Well, welcome to building a VR game for Oculus Quest. My name is John Nelson. And uh, you may have been here last year to catch my uh, prior talk, uh, building a game for Oculus Go. Um, today we're going to take a look at the differences between Oculus Go and Oculus Quest. Uh, here's the outline of the talk. We're going to look at the, the different uh, devices, the 6DOF and 3DOF devices. Uh, a quick tutorial on building uh, a sample in Unity from where you can get started and uh, build your own game. And then uh, we'll talk about cross-modal plasticity and, uh, and look at some demos. So this is not going to be so much technical in nature, but uh, more of a fun and uh, visual uh, or uh, audio-visual uh, haptic sort of experience. So um, I mentioned 3DOF versus 6DOF. What is that? Uh, 3DOF is three degrees of freedom, which means that when you, when you wear one of these headsets, this is the Oculus Go, and it's a standalone headset. When you wear this device, you have freedom of motion, uh, pitch, yaw, and roll, but you don't have XYZ planes to navigate in. So I can't walk to the side, walk to the front, walk to the back, and expect it to register within the headset itself. This only uh, pivots from a, from a single point of origin. Um, and that's, that's good. That's a, that's, that is a sense of virtual reality, but it's not quite adequate. Uh, it's not really natural. That we don't sit in one place and interact with the world all the time. Now, some, in some cases we do, in games, some of the games we do. Six Degrees of Freedom, uh, as featured by the Oculus Quest, gives you that extra three dimensions. Oh, I can't... I currently have it tethered for development purposes. But you can see that the quest gives you that pivoting back and forth, but also lateral movement back and forth, forward, backward, and even in a Y dimension, up and down. So that's a concept that you know has to be understood, and I'm sure that this crowd understands that. If you're uh, if you're gamers, you understand the. And here again, the Oculus Go, which I featured in my talk last year, is more like a drive-in movie. You're sitting in one place and uh, watching a movie. But the navigation and, is very unnatural. And the interaction with the world, at least through the Go and 3DUF, is very unnatural. So the Go has this pistol grip. And that's great for first-person shooters where you're holding a gun. In fact, it's ideal because you have... But uh, you only have one, one, uh, um, one device to interact with the world, and that's, that's really quite unnatural. Now, the Oculus Quest brings us to the 6DUF world, and uh, that's more like playing racquetball, as I like to think of it. Uh, the navigation is very natural. You, you navigate in room space. You can walk around. You, you're actually looking into the scene, not just out. With the Oculus Go, you're looking outside from a single point. With the Oculus Quest, you can do that, but you can also look in, navigate around. So you have room scale navigation, what, what is called room scale navigation. Um, the Quest also has two controllers, one for each hand. And these are much more sophisticated controllers than the pistol grip of Go. Uh, so. And these, these also can navigate within three space. Okay? And they render hands in, uh, in the scene. So you have grab hands and the ability to grab objects in the scene uh, and hand tracking, which allows you to actually visualize your hands in place of the controllers uh, in the scene. And Quest also has, this is unrelated to, uh, to uh, 3DUF and 6DUF, but it has a guardian system. Because you're moving laterally around the room, 
you might bump into things. So it has a guardian system which lets you define the limits of the room ahead of time and then play within those limits. And if you go step outside the limits, there, there's a, like, a, like a holodeck grid uh, put up to indicate that you are uh, uh, outside of the uh, limits of the space. Now this is a game for Oculus Go called Dead and Buried. And this is 3DUF. And you can see right away, there's no lateral movement. You're, you're fixed in one position. You're shooting, uh, shooting zombies. And the pistol grip is ideal for this game because the pistol grip uh, you know, substitutes for a gun. And you're shooting up zombies. And in my case, you're getting killed by zombies. <laughs> But you never move from that one position. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, um, the, we're, we were promised a, like a 50-foot audio cable. Uh, is it going into a laptop? Uh, it is. Uh, it's an eighth-inch jack, stereo jack. It goes into this uh, Oculus device. Yes. So you should just use it. Ah, uh, but I needed the long cable because I'm going to be navigating over. So you're going to be all the way down. Yeah, way over there in that empty space. Okay. Excuse us, there's technical difficulties. <laughs> okay. So, um, the way that the three DOF devices compensate for the uh, for that uh, lack of lateral movement is by doing something called teleporting. Now you can see I'm using the pistol grip to indicate jump, jump points. This is the demo I created for the last um, MAGFest, last year's MAGFest. You can see that I'm navigating throughout the scene because we only have three DOF. We're fixed in one position. We have to teleport or uh, use the pistol grip to move within the space. And that's, that's here again, that's very unnatural. When, when we're, we're in the real world, we don't use a, a teleport mechanism to jump you know, from place to place. It's basically a compromise. Uh, no, that's normal. <laughs> I mean, the audio, it's, the, audio, the audio is just very poor on the, uh, on the projector. We're not getting house audio. So house audio would actually just like this. And just plug it into your audio jack. Okay. And now through the system. Um, that's easy enough to do. What I meant was turn the audio down more so your voice is more clearly heard as well as the sound. Can you uh, crank that channel down a bit? Yep. All right, we're going to Ooh, much nicer. Okay, as I was saying, this is the demo that I created last sound it goes very well with the scene and we'll discuss that later but right now I wanted to point out the teleporting of 3DOF uh, devices how you know it, it's a compromise it's good but it's really unnatural and it, it pull it keeps you separated from virtual reality it's not a hundred percent immersive so there's, there's sort of a hierarchy of, uh, of interaction with these devices. At the, the worst case, you have pistol grip pointers like this. Nobody navigates like this with a pistol grip pointer. Or you have Joy-Cons or joysticks like this uh, Nintendo Switch, where um, you would navigate using the, the, uh, the, the joysticks. 
But that's not natural either. I mean, you know, when we drive a car, we don't use joysticks, right? We use a steering wheel. So uh, add-ons have been created like this. These are uh, yoke uh, steering wheels for, for, um, for uh, driving games and racing games. And you put the Joy-Cons in these steering wheels and you steer like this. Now that's much more natural. Um, on, uh, increasing on the end of the spectrum, you have uh, these dual touch controllers of the Oculus Quest, where you uh, can manipulate the environment, but you have actual room scale navigation just by walking back and forth. That's much more natural. And, uh, and on the top end, you have hand tracking, where you visualize um, your hands and the device actually renders your hands and sees your hands. And we'll, we'll see a little bit of that if we can technically get that to, to work today. So in virtual reality and gaming, we have a uh, spectrum of, um, of uh, interactions with the real world or the virtual world going from kind of clumsy handheld devices all the way up to natural hand tracking and room scale navigation. So let's look at 60 of space. Here's that same slide again. We're going to take a look at the Oculus Quest and the enhancements that the extra three dimensions of uh, movement give you. This is a sample from the Oculus Quest uh, Oculus integration package that is available for Unity, the three, Unity 3D engine, which we're going to be developing uh, code in, made with Unity. If I go too fast, just interrupt me. And uh, so um, this is a virtual world that's a sample that's provided by Oculus. And you can see there's hand grab. And you interact, you interact with the world very naturally. There's no only using the, uh, the hand controllers, the touch controllers. But the metaphor is much more realistic. So I can pick up these blocks and I can move them around. They physically, they interact with each other. They shake and respond to uh, collisions. Pick up the water bottle, stack it. You see how it wavers back and forth a little bit? The physics is very, uh, is very real world. But I'm still using the touch controllers. So I dropped it, and I have to lean down. Yeah, that's enough of that. This is a game that I developed for a prior version of the Oculus Quest Oculus integration package. Uh, it's a pentominoes game where we are taking the standard pentominoes. Who, who here doesn't know what the puzzle of pentominoes is? Anybody? The, the goal here is to take these pieces there are 12 pieces of, with five cubes, composed of five cubes, and we're trying to arrange them. Yeah, you're good to go. You got the signal at the board. You should just have to plug in and hit play. It has a little volume knob on it, just like on your um, laptop audio. OK. Uh, are you going to be around for a while? Um, I am not. I'm running through all of the OK. Time. Will somebody be around for a while? I guess, yeah. Yeah, we can, we can definitely have somebody. I just, I just won't think. Okay, it. well, just, you know, a yeah. matter of... Uh, okay. right. So, um, the game of Pentominoes uh, has 12 unique pieces and uh, made up of five cubes. And uh, the goal is to arrange them on this board in virtual space so that they completely cover all the cubes, all the squares, um, with no missing, no mi missing uh, faces and uh, no overlap and no, uh, no going outside the board. And now, as I say, this was created with a prior version of the Oculus integration package. 
but um, it happens that uh, we got an update, version 12, and I'll go into that in a little bit. But uh, version 12 pulled the rug out from everything I did. So I had to cobble together this uh, presentation like within a couple weeks. So um, that distance grab environment is really compelling. It gives you 60 OF, it gives you room scale, uh, it uh, provides interaction with the devices, it visuals. Uh, you can also add physics with sound, sound uh, physics, and, uh, and render with uh, hand tracking. So that's a good starting point. And so what we're going to do here is, if this nutty idea works, is um, create a new Unity 3D project in the Unity editor, which is what our development environment, import the Oculus integration package, instantiate that example in the Unity uh, um, uh, editor, and then customize it for Oculus, and then modify the existing scenes to suit our game or whatever it is we're going to build, and then add uh, hand tracking and sound and haptics. At least that's the goal. All right, so let's build it in Unity, or let's discover how to build this in Unity. So the hardware you need to get going is an Oculus Quest, which we have right here, a USB-C or USB-C to A cable, depending on your hardware, your, uh, your laptop. You can see I have it tethered here with a USB-C cable, and it's connected to my Macintosh here. Uh, you need a Mac or a PC. Uh, and a Bluetooth device, iPhone or Android. Now, the purpose of that is to register the device. But once it's registered, you don't need to have the phone anymore, the other device. The software you need is Mac OS X or Windows 10 to, uh, you know, to base uh, Unity on. Uh, Android Studio, which is freely available, and you can download that from the web. Um, the Unity 3D latest release and Asset Store. Asset Store, Unity has its own Asset Store. You can download resources, plugins, uh, prefabs, uh, all kinds of material. And a lot of it is for free, and a lot of it is very good quality, too. Uh, you can go a long way with the Asset Store. Uh, the Oculus integration package, Unity, Unity doesn't know anything about Oculus right out of the box. So you have to download the Oculus integration package, which is a sort of like a bundle of drivers and uh, code and assets that, uh, that drive the specific uh, Oculus device. And it has to be Oculus integration package version 12. Don't, uh, don't go with anything prior to that. Um, we used to have, and what we're going to do is develop in Unity on the PC and then sideload it which means downloading it into the device and then running it on the device in an untethered mode, which is really great. Um, it used to be I used ADB, the Android Debugging uh, Bridge, and uh, that's no longer necessary. Build and run in Unity, we'll see that later. Build and run works just fine, and in fact, it's very seamless and smooth. Um, you also need to download Visual Studio uh, with C Sharp. Uh, Oculus used to use Mono, which is a C-sharp workalike, but um, Mono is uh, out now, and they prefer that you use Visual Studio. This is the process for our architecture for doing the side loading. You can see the Bluetooth devices in the middle, but that's only for registering the device. Once, once, uh, once that's done, you don't need the the uh, the phone or the Bluetooth device anymore. Unity 3D is a piece of software, the editor that runs on your PC, and you're going to download, sideload, uh, your game or your uh, application over the USB-C cable into the device. Um, Oculus has had a rough, uh, rough road to, to hoe. Um, the Oculus integration package uh, it was broken for several versions uh, as far as the Oculus Quest was concerned. Uh, 1.38 was very marginal. It practically didn't work. 1.39 was broken. Uh, nothing worked in that. 1.40 tried to fix some bugs, but 
everything was pretty much broken. 1.41 worked with only with customizations, and they were really bizarre hacks that you had to, to do to make it work. And then on December 23rd, just, just this, uh, this past uh, month, version 12 was released, and that had a beautiful set of new features, the Oculus Link, which lets you tether games running on the PC to the device itself, which is a great feature. It provided hand tracking. It uh, cleaned up a whole slew of bugs. In fact, the versioning numbering system, they completely changed, I think, to uh, indicate that they had a, you know, a new clean approach to, uh, to things. So um, w when, when you're uh, downloading this software, don't accept anything other than version 12. Just, you know, just do the latest thing and the latest updates, and you'll be fine. Uh, same with Unity. Um, you want to use 2017.4.3.0 or later. I would say if you can use 2019. whatever, the very latest thing, because this software is changing so much that, um, uh, that, that you want the latest stuff. And the Oculus firmware, Oculus Quest updates all by itself. So um, uh, the firmware updates should, should come for free. Now we're going to do a live demo of Unity. I mean, I've talked a lot about Unity Editor, and you know, you're probably scratching your head and going, "Well, what, what the hell is that?" You know, well, Unity Editor is a 3D editing system for um, constructing 3D apps, but also for constructing virtual reality apps. Now, take a look at this set of platforms it supports: PC, Mac, Linux. Standalone devices, TVIO, TVOS. That's the Apple uh, Apple TV. Uh, iOS. That's uh, iPhones, iPads, Android. It uh, supports Android devices, including the Oculus devices, which are Android chip based. Steve mentioned that that they're they're actually based on the Snapdragon uh, series of chips. Uh, and Oculus, being an Android device. Uh, uh, Android shows up here. Uh, it can support WebGL. It can support Facebook apps, PS4, Xbox One, if you uh, if you are so inclined. So this editor is really very good. Now what I've done is um, uh, I've loaded the uh, I've gone to the a asset store. And the demo gods are not generous. The force is with me. I'm one with the force. The force is with me. I'm one with the force. Where is my search? I said store search. You can that. If I close that? You close that X and right. Oh, uh, this guy? This guy. They moved the search to the bottom. Oh. I don't know why they did that. They just, they just did. Wow. I didn't notice that at all. <laughs> okay. So we'll search for Oculus integration. Typically, when you fire up Unity 3D, you're going to come up with a blank project. And um, what you do is you you create this blank project and then use the asset store to search for Oculus integration. And right there at the top is the Oculus integration package. And what you'll do is you'll get this, these two controllers to indicate that uh, you're downloading software which, which uh, interacts with the uh, device controllers. It's free, and all you have to do is import it. Now, I've already imported it because the import, the, uh, import process does take some time, and I don't want to waste time staring at something, you know, progress bars. 
But once you have the Oculus integration package installed, you will go down to the project area and search for something called distance grab. Oops. And there's this symbol, this unity symbol is, is what it's called a scene. And uh, that, that whole, you know, the blocks and the interaction with the cubes and stuff like that, that's all part of a scene called distance grab. And so what you do is you drag this distance grab up into the hierarchy. Um, the, the Unity editor arranges its projects as a uh, scene graph, which is a hierarchy of objects in a scene. So once, once you drag the scene up here, it instantiates it, and you have an OVR, which is Oculus Virtual Reality, player controller, that's the, the player, you, in first person mode, an environment which consists of static objects, ground, light, the table, remember the table, and a room prefab, which is the whole environment of the room, the skybox, the tables, the static objects that, that will not move. Then it has a, a dynamic hierarchy of wood blocks, billiard balls, distance grab objects, uh, and the hands. The hand, you notice the hands that were in that scene that were moving around? Those are actually objects in the scene, and they're on the floor when, you, when you're in the editor. So if you're looking for those hands, you'll find them on the floor in the middle of the scene. And it's kind of funny, I think. But they're, they're classed as actual objects themselves. Um, these are all dynamic objects because they'll be manipulated and built, or manipulated and, uh, and controlled, and they're movable, and they interact with physics and interact with each other. Uh, billiard balls and soccer balls and, and all that stuff. So now we have our scene, and uh, the next thing to do is to configure the scene with respect to the Oculus. So when these things are when these things come up, they come up by default in PC, Mac, and Linux. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to select Android for Oculus, and then click on switch switch uh, switch player, which I don't see right here, but. And then you have to modify the player settings. With version 12, a whole load of bizarre customizations went away, and uh, now, we, now it's very simple to set up. You just set up a default company, uh, and I just leave it as default company. Uh, give it a project name, which is mag import. Um, Resolution and presentation is pretty much set, you know, properly, right out of the box. You want to use the latest uh, Open Glass 3 for the graphics API. And this is the part where you have to take notes. I'll probably make this available on the web. And you'll have the YouTube video as well, so look for the YouTube video. Minimum API layer should be set to API level 25, NuGet, at least as of this uh, demo. Uh, scripting backend is, I use Mono. Um, I, I haven't had very good luck with IL-2 CPP, so I use Mono. Net 4.x, that's the, uh, uh, I think that's the um, .NET. Uh, version 4.x and I think that's about it. Then we have XR settings, the extreme reality settings. This you have to set to Oculus. There's, there's, a, uh, there's a bunch of other options, Vulkan and uh, spelled with a K, Vulkan and other devices. You want to remove all of those with this little tab over here, the plus and minus sign, remove selection from the list. 
Remove everything and add Oculus. So stereo rendering mode should be multi-pass. And that is basically it. There were, there were dozens of customizations prior to version 12, but that's, that's essentially it. Now, all you have to do is build and run. No ADB, no, no bizarre terminal mode hacks. Ah, but you know what? It helps if we turn on the device. when you get up at 9.30 in the morning. I should eat in the morning. So you see the error there. It says no Android device connected. Well, yeah, that's true. There's no device turned on. Okay, so I'm going to put the Oculus on headset on my head, tether to the PC so we can download the programs, and I'm going to turn it on. I can find the on button. It's very hard to find. There we go. Okay. You won't see the Oculus device on the screen just yet. We're going to do that later. Have a live demo. There we go. So I have to set up a guardian, confirm the guardian, stationary boundary, confirm, and it should all just work. So now that we have the Oculus device up and running, we're going to retry. And you can see it's downloading. It's actually building the, building the application and downloading it into the device. Let's take a little bit of time. While we're doing that, I'm going to set this. Steve, this is where I could use your hand. Use a hand. What do I do for you? We're going to do some live casting. Certainly. At least we're going to try live casting. And I'm going to need you to... Live casting means that literally the device, the Oculus, is going to be transmitting usually to a television or a computer screen. Uh, it's a way to see what's going on. Um, depending on the game, I don't heavily recommend it as a party. Because if the game is one thing if you're standing still and watching, but if it's a game that you're shooting around like this, the screen looks chaotic. Uh, it, it can make people nauseated watching it. So. Uh, there's a whole area of design where it comes to actually having a person with a computer, with an Oculus on his face, and someone else usually looking at a different screen, looking at something in God mode. Now, we've got some really interesting games out there. Okay, so what do you want me to do? Um, I'm going to start sharing. Okay, you want me to sh Now, the order of this is pretty precise. I'm going to cast...
And you should get a... Yes, start casting. Okay. Tell me if anything comes up on the screen. Well, it says connecting. Hence it not found. Try again. Okay. Is, uh, are we on Wi-Fi on that device? Don't know. You're on the wrong Wi-Fi network? Yep. <laughs> okay. So TechOps provided us with a... I don't see it. I don't see it either. Gaylord Convention? No, no. It's a Wi-Fi... Actually, I don't see it here either. Hmm. Should we just make this 2020? <laughs> That's what we're trying well, to find. We had Tech Ops set us up their, our own private. Here it is, MakeFest 2020. No, that's not it. Well, that's the one I, I've used before. You can use that. Um, but it's not set up for peer-to-peer. -peer. Oh, yeah, you guys did have that set special. Uh, it was, uh, um, what's his name? Um, Mark. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, yeah, that, that might be the... Issue real quick. Let me just ping him in chat. Okay. Make Tell sure him you... more stuff is waiting for it. All right, well. Can you continue on? I think we can continue on. Anyway, the what you saw in, see, uh, the demo gods are not generous to me, so I usually have a backup plan here. Uh, what you saw in the distance grab demo is what you'll see on the he headset. So let's return to the presentation. So the distance grab hierarchy looks like this, and we saw this just, just before, static objects. Let's see if I can use this. Static objects, ground, light, table, room, dynamic objects, which are the wood blocks, billiard balls, the grab hands, left and right hands, which are actually sitting on the floor in the scene, and all these other d things. This OVR player controller is the first person player with left and right and a center eye anchor, that's for, um, for video recording, and uh, a couple other objects. This canvas with debug is, is, is a part of the scene. It really has little to do with the Oculus uh, functionality. And we've run and built the distance grab. We'll go through this one more time. Inside the Oculus, I'm selecting that Unity Editor project that I just built, and this is what it would look like if we were doing it live. And there we go. That's a video recording made inside the device, and then downloaded for this presentation because the demo gods are not generous. The force was not with me this time. Okay. So those those irregular pieces that you, you may have seen in the scene are um, Pentomino's game pieces. So. Because everything is arranged in a scene graph hierarchy, you can construct your own objects from primitive objects. And this is the Pentomino set that I built in the uh, Unity 3D editor for addition to the uh, standard uh, 
distance grab. This is another view of the design of those pentominoes pieces. Cross-modal. Um, there's a thing in, in uh, cognitive science called cross-modal plasticity. You know, we've already seen that, you know, 60 UF brings a better navigation to us. Uh, it brings um, um, better interaction with better controllers or hand tracking itself. But um, there's something called cross-modal plasticity, which uh, when you combine various cues to the brain, uh, you actually get a much greater sense of of uh, reality. So if you combine visuals plus that room space navigation plus sound, spatialized sound, plus uh, touch and haptics. Now haptics is basically um, uh, simulating touch and feel uh, for the hand. So if you're holding one of these controllers uh, and you touch a surface in 3D space, uh, it'll vibrate. Um, Steve, Steve, can tell you a story about uh, how we were at the Microsoft store and uh, we, they had an art, a virtual reality archery game. Why don't you tell that story? Oh, that, that was the uh, come to God moment for VR. I've been fooling around with VR for 30 years. But the moment when I realized something really, really got good was there is a game in the Rift's introductory package where you're in a laboratory and one of the mini games is you very cartoon character on top of a castle shooting down at orcs who are charging. I'm a reenactor, I've done that in real life. <laughs> but, but I got up there, I picked up the bow, pulled it back, and it vibrated like a real bow. You let go and thunk, and this part one, this one here vibrated. Um, it's, what's the term you're always using? Uh, Cross-modal plasticity. and it had tactile feedback, and that puts you in the moment more than anything else. Uh, the void over in Tyson's Corner, they have places where you walk over lava and they project heat at you. And that makes you feel like you're really there. So the more senses, don't laugh, there are some people working on a modular device that gives you smell. <laughs> yeah. in certain areas, I'm not sure how good it's gonna be, <laughs> but there's no excuse for a design for you not to have sound, uh, visual, obviously, and some haptic feedback. When we were working on the void chest plates, you got hit by a blaster, it vibrated. That was surprisingly, it gave you the impression, yes, I've just been hit. And uh, if you've ever played Beat Saber, when you, uh, when you cross the swords, the, uh, the laser swords in Beat Saber, they vibrate, you know. They you get the real impression that we've just done something physical. That yeah. We've actually done something in reality. In fact, your, your brain doesn't want to cross them anymore because it, it senses that haptic feedback. It's, it's really, it's quite an experience. I've, I've played that archery game and you pull back the bow and it, and it feels like you're actually pulling oh, back yeah, the it bow. It feels like you have tension, which is ridiculous. There's no tension there. The surprise was good. That's that's the that's the thing is the brain is so totally tricked out that you you swear oh there's tension there now if you combine all of these as sensory aspects. Arenas like the void like to use the term hyper reality. There's a lot of different abbreviations nowadays. HR seems to indicate where there is some physical presence. You're in a room that has a real table and you reach out, but the VR is also there. But there's something more added. Now remember this teleport demo. Well, this is also a good example of ambient sound. The sound sometimes makes the movie and the, the environment. Sound is very powerful. I dislike, I like, dislike about the ambient sound. We have discussions about this. I dislike the heavy ambient sound. I like the directional sound. In other words, water dripping over here, a juke box in the corner, clock. Because they have three d sound. <laughs> And Unity 3D Editor gives you spatialized sound. So, in fact, this demo was uh, developed with various sound points. So, as you move through the uh, through the level, uh, different sounds come up, come and go. So there there is a sense of three dimensionality. I'll give you an example. Now you'll notice
notice that as we navigate through this scene, as we get go th towards this corridor, the sound does change subtly. You get more of that tinkly bell sound. Yeah, the not sound quality is not there. It's actually more noticeable in the game. Yeah, that's 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 true. You have stereo sound in the game here. We don't really have stereo. Constantly changing the visuals first. Once you get the visuals, lock it down. Then worry about the what the system sounds are. So the, um, the another aspect. What network is this connected to? Uh, this is currently connected to one of the. Um, that's a good question. You're trying to cast to this, right? N no. Well, I'm trying to cast. John, at this point, don't worry about yeah. casting. We're just going to keep going. Right, well. Okay. well it is important because the, the, the big follow-up is a so live demo. Yeah, so, so what are you trying to cast? I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> so <laughs> this, this guy in Wi-Fi doesn't matter. It's the phone. The phone has to be connected to the Wi-Fi. Yeah, the same Wi-Fi. And this thing has to be connected to the same Wi-Fi. And it has to be that local Wi-Fi device. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what network you're on so that I can get the password and give it to you. Which we just said. Uh, last night we dry ran it and it was Sprint something C8A, I think. I don't see that device anywhere around here. It was a big upright with two antennae and I don't see it anywhere here. They were going to leave it right here in the room. Also, if you go to your side loading, there is a store for free apps called the Side Load Store. Um, you have to turn it on as a developer to get that side loading. Um, it's not exactly approved by Oculus, but they're not, you're not going to get anything. Uh, they'd rather you just buy it from them rather than get free apps. But it's a way of doing it. Okay, so we've, we've heard ambient sound. Now let's take a look at another demo provided by Oculus called the Hands Interaction Train Scene. This again is recording live inside the device itself. Now what I'm doing is pausing that, that device or that uh, application and clicking on use hands inside the settings. Use hands turns those controller hands into real hands. This came out three weeks ago, four weeks ago? Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. He's already programming and using it. I was amazed yeah. at how fast this was. Included. Now notice what's happening here. Those hands are pinching. The now we're using pinch gestures because we don't have any controllers in our hands. And you actually see a phantom hand. Right there. Yeah, right there. And, and the, the, the sample comes up with this uh, cardboard masking tape control. See, we can change the style of hands to skeleton hands. Now this is this is getting towards a really natural natural uh, interaction. Only my hands are in this scene. No controllers. I'm not using any controllers of any kind. Oh yeah, that's 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 a great that's a great touch. Notice I'm doing distance manipulation of that windmill. I turned the windmill off and turn it back on again with the hands, not with buttons. I, I can turn on and off the uh, the uh, crossing 
Yeah, the Oculus Rift paint program is the Quick Rush. Incredibly good. It's all of one hand and the controller on the other hand. In fact, this was so compelling uh, a demo, I actually got on the floor and started, you know, playing with it like a real like a model train set. It, it really is compelling because of the fusion of different sensory inputs, the visuals, the light see. Here, I'm trying to, uh, I'm interacting with the windmill, but I'm trying to interact with the train. There's no haptics, unfortunately, so, but I'm using the hands, the hand tracking, so I won't get haptics because I don't have the controllers in my hands. There is actually a haptic brace about there. Ah. Also, the design of this is is um, uh, very engaging. You notice everything is a cardboard cutout put together with masking tape and like crayon drawings. It makes it look like a toy train because it is a toy train. Now you notice I'm in the scene, walking in the scene, and actually interacting with it and playing with it like a real train set. And at the student center, training around you. That's that's going to be tricky to do. Microsoft has an incredible research team right now. So you can see that there's an evolution between devices like this, which are compromises, you know, joysticks and buttons and you know complex things, and more natural things like use of your natural use of your hands, visuals, sound, and you know, yeah, all, all very, it's like the difference between um, the, the uh, command line, if you know what that is, the command line, the terminal command line in computing, and the Macintosh interface with the mouse. We all thought the mouse was, you know, a, a beautiful, natural way of interacting. But even that nowadays, compared to these systems, is um, really clunky. You know, who uses a mouse? So I guess it's really about real-world metaphors. You know, it, this is full of metaphors. There's no computer interaction, no uh, other other than the the uh, buttons and the goofy you know, cardboard control panel. But you would expect that in a real world. Every, most everyone who plays any type of game, even the ones that first thing you do is pick up objects, start throwing them in the air, and try to catch them. Start jumping. Everyone, I mean, everyone does Yeah, now, now, I'm, now I'm just like being a kid here. Yeah, look at this. And it's got the moo cow. And uh, en enabling hand gestures is very simple. You just, in Unity, you just enable controllers and hands. Um, and, uh, and you enable it in the device when you run it. And uh, in the menu bar. And uh, you've got your... Uh, You've got your hands. Yes, sir. It's very simple. Quick question. So that was an out of the box, like the train demo is like out of the box. Out of the box. Out of the box. And so it did all that. But then by looking and playing with that, you learned some stuff that you were able to do some something uh, custom. Absolutely. Outside, right? Uh, what the, the, the process is to import the Oculus integration package, find the demos. They're, they're kind of hidden. But if you know what to look for, you can read the documentation and find
find out the names of the demos. Uh, grab the scenes from the demos, drag them into the hierarchy for your new project, and, uh, and then basically use the infrastructure that those projects provide as starting points. So you could throw away all the objects in the scene, hopefully not everything, but you know, throw away the objects in the scene and then add your own objects. Uh, um, it, it gets into programming uh, with property sheets and in, in Unity, and that's beyond the scope of what I wanted to talk about today. I'm going to run over my time today anyway. So um, It is modular programming. You can bring things in. More importantly, you can bring stuff in not just from Oculus. There are tons of demo apps from other people where they post their source code, and they did something interesting, and you import it, and you see how it works, and you cut, copy, paste the sections you want, or, or the entire layout, like you said. Yeah, the um, the Oculus Asset Store, or not Oculus, the Unity Asset Store is very rich. Lots of free stuff. Um, that uh, that that temple uh, with the uh, the ambient sound and all that that was all free. It's called Cartoon Temple, and it's a beautiful, high quality uh, uh, temple uh, set of textures, materials, and uh, prefabs. Um, it's free, at least the last I looked. The, the sound, that was free stuff too. The, um, the grids and the gates and the, all the other fobs and stuff in there, that was all free. I just had to program the teleporting. A lot of the free stuff is obviously put out there by people who want to do it for fun and then hope someone will hire them who haven't seen their work. And it's a good way of advertising. Yeah. So there is better open source in the opportunity world than practically anything I've seen in the industry yet. So, um, to, to, to do the roundup, uh, the, the gist of this is make it immersive, make it natural, make it immersive, use real world plausible physics, uh, include sound, include all the senses if you can, but no music. Music is natural. There's no music soundtrack here. Uh, Unless you put a jukebox in or have a record player, then it's okay. Right. Uh, there are games like Bait, where it, which does have sort of a twangy Cajun sound track, but that's coming out of a radio. Uh, some app, some games. Um, There's your fishing game, which has crickets, and sometimes if you get close to certain cabins, you'll hear some banjo music. Yep. The uh, you should include haptics, but um, think Beat Saber. Now, Beat Saber is an interesting uh, uh, example because Beat Saber lives on music. But it, its whole thing is music, Beat Saber. Um, but try and use haptics, uh, Beat Saber-like haptics, where you know you cross the swords and they they uh, they vibrate the controllers. Um, always use 60 OF room scale navigation. Now that that brings a problem because room scale navigation means you need room to navigate in, and. Uh, uh, with the uh, Oculus Go and the controller-based navigation, you could sit there like a bump on a log and you know navigate all over the place. Uh, that facility is also available in the Oculus, but um, but uh, you don't want to use that by default. Uh, teleport don't run. In other words, don't don't use the controller to run to to navigate. Do teleporting because that's less nauseating. Yeah, getting your customers sick is a really bad idea. And yeah. 10 to 15 percent of the people out there will be nauseated by mechanical movement attached to a joystick. In some instances, it's worse. So yeah. don't do it. There's a few references. Uh, I would just look up Oculus Integration Package, uh, Oculus Sample Framework uh, with Google, and um, go to the Unity developer site at unity3d.com. and. Uh, they, they'll set you up. The, there's a lot of documentation. Just get, look for the getting started stuff and play with it. Play with the play with the stuff. If you want to get into a religious fight, talk to people about whether Unity or Unreal is better. <laughs> but if you want to get in this zoo, no one will argue that Unity is easier than Unreal. Okay? Even Unreal experts will say yes. If you if you haven't have any background in this type of thing, start with Unity. So speaking of getting jobs. Um, this is me uh, in my professional career. I'm uh, president of a small IT company in Virginia called Computation.com Incorporated. And uh, the brand is uh, always here to serve your needs if you have need for augmentation or if you like what you see in the, the Unity space, 
Oculus space, uh, I'm always available to help out. And that's it. I don't believe we have uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, I apologize for that. Okay. Well, you know, like I say, the demo gods sometimes that's aren't generous. That's why you recording of these things. Yeah, that's, that's why I went to great pains to make in-device recordings, because I was afraid something like that was going to happen. The force was not with me. We have me. a few minutes. There's one more question and answer. So you got two, yeah. two experts here to answer it uh, Hi, just a quick question. So for um, developing for VR, if you don't actually have like, a headset or controllers, right, is it possible to like... Uh, yes. Like, you can develop a Unity entirely on your PC and only towards the end move it over to a VR. It will be easier to have one, but you can create a 3D world. Yeah, I should, I should repeat the question. Oh, repeat the question, sorry. The, uh, is, is there a way to develop for VR without the device itself, I guess, is the, the question. Like an emulator or something like that? 90% yes. The last 10, 5, 10%, you're going to need a device. Which is what we were going to do tonight, if, today, if we had the Wi-Fi, is uh, have a live demo in this space and... Um, and but you, you saw that I was able to download the, um, the uh, application, the game, into the device right here, and very, very easily. But of course, you need the device, so yeah. Um, I'm not aware of any emulators, though. Well, you could, but you can run Unity as a 3D graphics. You can run a game in Unity as completely on desktop orientation. That's true. Actually, that's what my part of my development process is to develop for the PC because I have immediate feedback here, and then convert at the last minute, convert into Unity. Um, you but you don't you don't get the controllers though. Which and in the Oculus package, there's actually an emulator, so you can actually move the camera rig. Okay, yeah. When you hit play, and it won't. You, just, you don't get the controllers, but right, right. You can emulate the headset. But it's not very good. I yeah. said that, you get done, and then you got to get one device. That stuff is going to improve, though, because version 12 was a massive leap. I mean, I can't tell you the, the how much hair tearing out I was doing with uh, 1.4 and 1.3. And Oculus stuff, they don't mind sh shooting the back stuff. They, they're, they're not backward compatible a lot. Sometimes they say, okay, new thing, good idea. We're going to change the metaphor. And this is this is really the frontier. That's why I wrapped up by saying roundup time partner because this is a this is the, the cutting edge frontier and bleeding edge. We yeah, call it. you can't expect them to have everything developed all at once. They're 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 just like poking at it themselves. Now the reverse end is actually also very interesting. Uh, you can now edit more than ever within the VR world. We used to have to put the glasses on, pull them off, type them. More and more, you actually can edit, uh, at least for the creation of the world, within the VR, and that's kind of interesting. That's true for um, Unity, uh, not Unity, um, Unreal Editor. Unreal Editor has a live uh, 3D editing scheme. Yes? Could you use a wireless hotspot to sync the thing to? Yeah, can we use a wireless hotspot? That that has come up several times, no, and. Uh, right. Uh, what do he's, he's offering. Right. Um, uh, Let's not worry about it. Yeah, that, that's the I'd thing. I'd rather answer questions. That, that question has come, come up many times, you know, when I've requested from Tech Ops, you know, I want, want my own live, private uh, Wi-Fi. Can you use a hotspot? I promise next year mm. we're going to do a demo panel. We're going to clear the room and get many quests going at the same time and do some of the multiplayer shared stuff. Right. That, wi that, that, is kind of cool. that was kind of the, the goal of this talk was to give the talk and then and uh, wrap it up. SR, which stands for shared reality, where you're all... Oh, it's, it's, another, it's another one of those acronyms. We've got MR, XR, VR, AR, and now HR. it's SR.